Okay, our third speaker today is uh, Bhavesh Patel of Synopsis, who's going to do top tips for successful low power verification. Um, actually, that was a great presentation from um, Mike Bailey. So it's kind of set the scene for, I mean, Paul Bailey, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of set. Up. <laughs> I'm still jet lagged though, just coming from the US. I'm nursing a cough as well at the moment. Um, so hopefully you guys clear with me. Um, actually, I'm, kind of, I'm going to keep this kind of high level. That, again, if I was to try and go through everything I would give for tips of good for low power verification, I'd spend the entire day. And we have done, we've created workshops for that. Um, so I've only put, I've put a few things in here and kind of set the scene on what the real problems are when you're trying to plan for you know, verification of low power designs. And actually, Paul went through some of the stuff I actually ripped out, so it's kind of helped. <laughs> no, it's good because you've covered what I, I can't. Um, so the challenge typically when you're looking at these designs is, of course, while simple in concept, UPF is quite, you know, it can be quite complex and very verbose. And as, um, you know, we were shown earlier today, you know, there's quite a few commands in there. There's various options. And if you're dealing with, you know, many domains with many, um, you know, ports on there, it could become pretty huge. And then there's a question of verifying each one of those strategies and every port in your design. And so if you think about, you know, macro cells and everything else, you could be looking at hundreds of macros, each with, you know, two to five supplies on there, depending on how complicated they are. And then, then creating a PST around that. You could have a PST table like I've seen recently, you know, which has over 200 states. I imagine creating a PSD table to cover that and then dealing with that from there. You know, you can quickly go out of hand. Um, and then, as you know, somebody has been telling me lately, is it's, it's, you know, this, um, this complexity then just all multiplies because you've got the complexity of the design that you're normally taking care of anyway. You know, with all its various functional permutations and corner cases and everything else you've got to deal with. And then on top of that, you've got to think about, okay, I've got that, and then what happens in each power mode I'm in? Or what happens when I'm transitioning between the states? Or, you know, pushing an interrupt at the same time? And, you know, you can think of many other permutations on top, on top of them. So it's greater than just the sum of these issues, but more of an exponential growth, really. <coughs> and let's take a, a quick step back. So traditionally, when we're looking at um, verification, we're thinking of a specification, you know, mainly around our design. We then start creating plans and start creating RTL for that. So, you know, you'll work on the verification side of it, and of course the RTL designers will do their bit, and they'll write assertions, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the day, you want to get to a point where you're just doing lots of simulations, and possibly some static checking, formal equivalence checking, et cetera, just to make sure you haven't broken anything. And that's complicated enough. As we know, the usual marketing statistics is verification takes 70% of the time. In the real world, maybe even more. <clears throat> so add to that now, power. So in a way, it's a very similar concept, and that's what we're trying to say. There's no difference. You're starting with a power spec, you'll create UPF for that. Um, that UPF then becomes part of the intent, becomes you know, bundled, bundled in with your RTL. So you'll have your RTL and your UPF, and that should describe everything you want at the end of the day. And similar with the planning, we, 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 you know, we would re um, recommend that right at the start you should create a plan that goes through how do we verify all of this new logic we've added and what we've created and how we want to test it. And also, even in tool chain, um, tool chain flow, what do we want to add in there? You know, what kind of tools you want to use? What kind of flows you want to use? Where are you catching all these issues? And so again, then we go right down to the corner again, what are we now doing for simulation static checks? So at this point, we're going to be looking at, you know, your power structures, your strategies, you want to make sure you've actually tested and gone through all of those. And then when it comes to your, to your you know, test benches, you want to now make them more power aware or voltage aware. And now you want to add in, how do we deal with the power controls, the signals, and the power management units? You want to now properly verify those and their behavior and their effects on the whole design. Assertion and monitors, coverage, all of that helps here, especially when you want to test and cover all your state tables and everything else. And of course, then it all goes down into the debug side of it. 
the debugging of this becomes even more complicated. You've got to now look at state visualizations, actually viewing of where your design is in the power states and how the UPF is interacting with the RTL, etc. Although that makes things quite complicated. And also actually being able to see the corruption and where it came from, because if you're just getting exes out of a power domain, how do you know where that X came from? Was it design logic? Was it due to a power rail getting shut off? And which power rail? You need to be able to trace all of that back. So all of that complicates traditional verification. So moving into some recommendations, one thing we always recommend is try and do this at all stages of your design flow. And this is a typical, I could say this is a synopsis flow, but you know, other tools do the same thing. So typically when you're doing a design, you're starting off at RTL level, and you're, you're trying to make that golden. So you're going to be doing tons and tons of simulation on your RTL to make sure you haven't got anything that breaks your original spec. And that it's golden, and the design should function as long as it's implemented as I've written in RTL. Similar thing with UPF. You want to make sure you've verified your RTL with the UPF, and you haven't missed anything in there. There's no isolation logic, level shifter logic that isn't present that should be, or vice versa. And that whole thing makes sense. You're not adding a lot of extra complexity that actually hasn't given you any benefit. And so, of course, you'll be doing loads of voltage aware, you know, multi-voltage simulations. And on top of that, static verification. Um, for example, we have MBRC. Cadence have a very similar functionality where you're basically checking to see, are these structures going to cause you any problems? Have you checked every crossing? Have you made sure everything is correct by construction from the beginning? And of course, as you're stepping through the flow, you want to make sure you're doing that after implementation, after um, gate level, and then again, right at the end, that PG netlist, to make sure that throughout the flow, you're not breaking anything. And if you're doing this early on, you should have caught the majority of the issues at that point. And that's the easiest point to do it. Um, we have had some people saying, oh, we don't want to worry about it until we get to the gates. It could be too late by the time you get down there. You don't want to do major architectural changes at the gate level. And the other key element I would say is plan for success. You know, there's no, you know, there's never a bad you know, saying for actually doing things up front, working out what you actually want, um, and doing it up front. And it's very similar to, as I would say, traditional verification. Low power is no different. So you know, you want to make sure you analyze what you want out of the power spec. Very similar to what Paul Bay was doing before. He was doing a lot of analysis before he even started on what did he want to verify, um, you know, implement, and what could he do with the tools and languages? And that's because you were doing some good initial planning. Um, and, then that's the, and then that's what you'll break down. You'll find out what your power domains you're doing, what kind of elements make sense. And then once you've done that, you can then figure out in your pattern verification plan, how am I going to verify them? What state transitions am I going to go through? How am I going to test for them? Where do I need to create maybe some assertions or custom assertions looking at the power behavior? and the control. And then the key thing here is then, how would I identify and actually test failure mechanisms? How can I test that an isolation failed, or it came, or the control signal was out of sync, or whatever? You know, planning for those kind of failures. And then, of course, consider, actually, how does the power um, structures plus my design interact with each other? What would happen if I had interrupts while I'm powering up or powering down? You know, how would that manifest itself, plus how would I test for it? You know, all of that kind of planning is key to be successful. Okay. Um, and then there's some best practices around testing. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but, you know, it's basically you want to clearly understand what the intent is doing. Um, ensuring static testing is done up front. Because a lot of issues actually could be caught during static check um, checking because that's actually checking the structures, your UPF, and everything else. Verification, of course, does a lot more on top. You know, you're testing the PSTs there and everything else, and that is really key, and I will talk a bit about that. But the key thing is start simple and then build up complexity as you go along. Now, that, moving on to PSTs themselves, these power state tables, um, some people think, is it that important? It's actually very key. So if you think about it, a lot of tools out there and a lot of the flow actually assume the power state table is golden. That is fully defined because it's really user knowledge that's gone into a power state table. The tools don't know 
what states you want and what transitions you're going through. That's only something you can provide. And so the only real place you can actually test this is simulation. Static, static will work, know what you want. And simulation will actually show what states are you going through, are they behaving correctly, have you started transitioning through states you never even thought you would actually go into. So, you know, you would have thought some you may have gone through transitions you didn't think about. And how are you going to catch that? You may have some monitors, assertions, or checkers that actually tell you what you're doing. And, of course, you may actually have a state transition you can't actually do. You know, your design hasn't been set up for it. So that's something you may want to catch. Um, and then, as I've been alluding, the various things you can add in in your test bench and structure to help support this. Um, you, you can use complex test benches, and I've seen that done, and we've even had a nice snug article this year about it, where you can use really complicated UVM, OVM test benches to randomize the switching of structures and going through these states and making sure you've got full coverage. That's really great. great. Um, you can even use them to, you know, randomly inject interrupts. That's one way of testing, you know, thoroughly, that if you're going to have design interrupts, they could happen at any time. And can your power domains and control units and everything else deal with them? Um, but it's always also useful to create your own assertions. And then, of course, collecting coverage when you're actually running through an assertion as well as power-related coverage around the tables, around the actual control signals and the strategies and everything else, making sure you've actually gone through and tested everything thoroughly. And I think most tools out there nowadays collect that automatically for you, so that's great. So I just wanted to conclude that it is a challenge, but you know, you can be set up to do it. And if proper planning is done ahead of time, um, you can be quite successful. I mean, it can be kind of done, I wouldn't say easily, but, you know, really easily. But it, um, it's, it's good to know that it does add another dimension of complexity. You know, it does add that extra level of um, complex test bench structures or intent that you've got to verify onto the actual um, task in hand. Um, you can do them separately, but to be honest, they seem to be interjected together once you've got the two structures built together. And as I said before, the actual PST is very, um, to verify that is important. Some people do forget that. Um, and it's always good to add this whole thing into your planning process. Because one way to be very successful quickly is to up understand all of this up front and plan for it from there. You know, don't leave it as a task that we'll do at the end. Let's do the rest of it first, because that could lead you to other trouble, because you haven't thought of it. Um, and yes, you have to keep in mind the correctness and the completeness of your power intent. And that's usually a good thing you should do right up front, using both simulation and static talks. Static first, because that's the quickest thing to catch the majority of the issues, and then simulation will help you with power state tables, some of the control signal and the way they behave, um, and various other little bits and pieces, you know, the very corner case behaviors that will probably take me an hour just to describe that alone. Um, hopefully that was helpful. I've kept that high level, I'm limited on time, unfortunately, otherwise I would have gone through a lot more information and, and caveats and tips. But okay. if there's any questions. <laughs>